Or have we veiled to a cursed mindset? This is very real stuff. But today I know that we're here for the good things of God and we're just going to look at Scripture and we've got to see the Word by the Spirit. I've taught a little bit about Bible interpretation. One of the biggest principles... Young Magnus, could I ask for the, the, the board up, please? Number one, when interpreting the Word of God, what do we need? The Word must interpret the word that is number one rule in Bible interpretation unfortunately we've had man's wisdom crept into the church with philosophies and vain deceitful things and traditions and rudiments of the world Paul talks about this it's a social theology it's, 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 it's man's wisdom and understanding that people are living their life by Humanism has got into the church. And we're not now schooled by the Spirit of God. Even though the words might seem eloquent and they might demonstrate some form of wisdom, the soul or the human wisdom cannot cut, doesn't even touch what the Spirit of the Word is about to say. So we've got to be open today Ears ready, heart to receive, mind ready to receive for the word of God and for the will and the purpose of what he's doing. Are you ready this morning? <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, that's going to be our grounding scriptures. I'm only going to look at a few thoughts here to get you started on the journey where we are going. I'll tell you what, I had a dream and I wanted to speak on that, but maybe Monday night I'll talk on that about a young woman from Zambia. I seen her in this. Lord took me up in the spirit and I seen this young woman. She was heavenly pregnant, but she was sitting outside of this supermarket. She's about to give birth. And I tell you what, the, what the spirit of the word, what the Lord is trying to say right now. There are many destinies, many, many future destinies that God wants to open up and birth. This generation has never like before are losing their sight. They're losing their inheritance. They don't know who they are. They don't understand the inheritance in them. Loss of identity. Loss of influence. No purpose for life. But God has a word. And God's going to open up this destiny, this purpose that is inside of humanity. There's going to be such a wonder that we're going to see God's people come forward. Tell somebody this morning, you haven't seen the best of me yet. Jade, come on. Young men and young women, Derek, you've got to declare it. You haven't seen the best of me yet. The destiny within me, I've got to get in the environment where God can bring it out. Who's ready for their destiny? You're not just a painter. D. You're not just a banana worker. There's greatness in you. But you need the word, the living word of God to break open this destiny that's in you. It's got the DNA of who you really are and it's given by the Father himself. It comes from the bosom of the Father, untouched by anything else. Preserved for this time, given for this hour and it needs an environment to evoke it forward that's how important coming to the house of God is a man that is lazy according to Proverbs a man that is a lazy a little folding of the hands and a little bit of sitting down causes deep slumber they're never awoken to who they are in God even in the natural when the word comes if you find yourself going to sleep Get up and break it. Just get up in the meeting and just move around. You might have to physically do something. That is the spirit of slumber on you. It's real. I used to have it back in the young days when I was younger. Our younger. Lad's only 40. Talking like he's 80. But in the, in the early days, Pastor Man 21 said, 2. Yeah. 
In those days, when I'd come to the church, Murray go, nightclub and come in, come out. I'd come in, I'd be like that. Soon as the word start, yeah. yep. I go in like that instantly. That's the spirit of slumber working its way over your life, making sure you stay out of the way from hearing the seed of the word. This is real. We're dealing with demonic influence that wants to hold you back. That's its whole purpose. But we have the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. When you hear that word, the Holy Spirit this morning, shout it out. Proclaim it. He is in me. He's on me. He's moving. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's counseling me. This is the Holy Spirit. Amen. This generation doesn't know him. That's why God has to bring forth this creation, this company of priesthood that will declare the glory of God to the earth. There's going to be a company of people. And I tell you what, there's some of them, you're in their house this morning, you're in amongst that company. You are called, you are chosen to be a royal priesthood. Unique in the world. You can't be the same if you're born again. You can't look like the world when you're born again. Trying to keep you in a box. God's created uniqueness in you. <laughs> Just trying to stir you up. We're walking and living life Monday to Sunday as if it's a, it's a habitual habit. I do the same thing, I go to work, I come home, I go to sleep, I wash up, I mow the lawn, kiss love, da da da, but I go, and then I go back to Monday again. People of God, today is a new day, declare it on your feet. This is my beginning. My new beginning, the new creation. And you've got to be genuine with it. You've got to contend for it. You've got to fight the good fight. The old man, he wants you to lay down and just live the same old life. Walk through life as the same old. I tell you what, I don't know why I'm talking this, but I'm going into there. I used to be on Centrelink, me and my wife, in and out, day and night, day and night. And nothing wrong with Centrelink. When you need it, you need it. God's provided. There's a means for that. But we got to a point where we were just living life on that. Didn't want to change. Frightened to get out of it, frightened to come out. Oh, we'll lose that 400, you know, oh, you know, everything like that. God had to break that mindset. Amen. Amen. Whew. Some people just need to get up right now. Break that mindset of being held into captivity. A system that's created to keep you at a limitation. Your heavenly father owns a thousand head of cattle, says the word. He has a vault that is endless. Resources that we've never ever seen nor touched. That's the father we serve. That's the greatness of God. And here we are living in a system that's limiting us. Man, this year we've got to break some mindsets. We need the word to grow us and mature us. I never knew that there was a whole growing and a growth about when God would give you the wealth of the world. He has to develop a character at the moment God pours into you. The spirit of God. When wealth comes upon you, it's not arrogant. It's so humble. Because God has made and corrected the character to handle the wealth. But when the character isn't made and you become wealthy, you can lose your way. Your character can reflect that. You can become arrogant. Everything is about money. Look what I got. I got this watch. I got that one. I got this. The character hasn't been corrected. That's why God had to work on Isaac for years and years. Because he had the character then to hold the exceeding wealth of the kingdom. Some people here are going to go on a journey. I'm going to prophesy here this morning. That the making of your character to handle the wealth of the kingdom of God. Lord, we release this word right now. 
you want it, you can receive it. Just raise your hands. That God, the making of a character of a godly man and a godly woman with deep humility to handle the wealth that you will transfer over. That we will administrate it, Father God, with a heart of righteousness, with the nature of the kingdom of God, that it might serve your purpose in this day, in this hour, in this generation. And we declare it and said, Amen and Amen. As it is said, let it be done. Matthew chapter 24. I tell you what, the Holy Spirit is here. He is amongst us this morning. Matthew 24 is written in red. It's italicalized because it's trying to show you these are the words of Jesus. And when Jesus would talk, he only talked one way. Parables. What does that mean? To the casual believer and the casual Christian, we've got an ear, got to get an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. When Jesus would ever speak to the multitudes in the crowd, he would only speak in parables. What is a parable, Pastor Manny? A parable is an earthly story. It uses natural illustrations, pictures, images. But it uses this earthly story, natural pictures, natural images to hide spiritual laws and realities. That's what a parable is. When Jesus talks a parable, he talks about this, that the parable of the seed and the sower, the sower and the seed. He's talking parabolic, so he talks about a farmer. But in the spirit realm, we know that when the, he talks about a sower going out to sow seed amongst the thorny ground, that seed is really the word of God. But he, count, he spoke it as a parable. He said the kingdom is like when a man goes outside and he's a farmer and he releases seed into the ground. That ground is you. The seed in the spirit is the word of God. When he puts it into the earth, you were created out of the dust of the earth. That's parabolic language. That's how Jesus teaches. So where church has to understand this, believers have to understand, when we look at parabolic words of Jesus, there's a spiritual meaning, spiritual reality behind it. Even though it's coming out in an earthly story, it's only images. The intent of the word is that you might pick up on the spiritual reality. A lot of Christians don't know this. That's why when we get into the book of Revelations, we see a red horse, a black horse, a white horse, a pale horse. People are looking everywhere on the earth for these horses. That's parabolic language. Symbolism. Natural illustration. Horse means power. Whether it is the color, you've got to know what the color means in the spirit realm. If it's white, it's the power of the spirit coming out. If it's black, the horse is black, it's the power of the soul. Different horse, different purpose. The red horse is refiner's fire. It comes out, it's the refiner's fire moving. Oh, are you all right here this morning? I'm only trying to give you an understanding that you might be equipped for the journey ahead. And Jesus begins to talk in Matthew chapter 24. Let's pick it up. Verse 16. I'm going to move quickly. I just want to highlight a few thoughts. The word says this this morning. Matthew, King James Version, 24 verse 16. Sorry, verse 17. The coming of the Son of Man. The where, the how, when, why, and how. Let him, parable, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Parabolic word. Now, everyone there at that time when Jesus was talking, historically, he was talking to Jews. Pharisees and Sadducees. 
people that understood somewhat the Mosaic law. So here, when Jesus was talking this, he said, oh, when he said, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take out of the house again anything out of the house. Everyone in the crowd knew he was talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. Everyone knew he was talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. History would tell us that the Jews in the Feast of Tabernacles, they would have this beautiful ceremony. Everyone would go up onto the tops of their little booths, their house, and they would make these little ganyas, these midges, these little houses out of palm leaves. And they would make them little houses, and they would take their food, they would take off all their old garments, and they would wash themselves, and they would enter up into the top level of their houses. And they would stay there for a few days or overnight, and it would be symbolic of that they were moving into a new season. Everyone knew this language. So when Jesus said this, in the spirit, the church of the living God has mostly experienced Passover, being born again. Then in 1970, we experienced Pentecost, the breaking out of the Holy Spirit. But no one knows what the church is in right now. By far and large, everyone is still celebrating the church, is only celebrating the gift of salvation, the beginning of our walk, and they're excited about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're in love with the gifts. Nothing wrong with the gift, but the gift and the beginning of salvation is not the whole package. People in Passover are people that are born again and they genuinely love Jesus, but they don't know how to live morally. They don't know how to live by the law of the spirit of life. Whoever's met somebody out in the world that they believe in God? Belief is not enough. I'll tell you that right now. James said that. The word of God said that belief is not enough. For faith without works, belief without any change is dead. Many people believe in God. Many people believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but belief is not enough. You can go out to the pub right now, and generally you'll see somebody who's backslidden. And what do they say? Oh, no, I'm in the, no brother, don't talk about God. I, I love him, but you know, I'm in a bad place right now. But in their heart, in their mindset, they genuinely, they believe in God. But what's the problem? Faith without works. Faith, word without belief, word without action is dead. There's no life of the spirit. There is no transformation. There's no reforming going on. They can't break the habitual habits of the old nature. Why? They have only experienced the blood of the lamb, the life of the sacrifice at Passover. Some go on, they walk a little bit more with Jesus and the Pentecost breaks out in them. And inside of them, they get the Holy Spirit. They have the evidence of speaking in tongues, revelation, dreams and visions, parables and proverbs, counsel of the word comes, but people of God, that is limited. That's not the fullness. Pentecost is not the fullness. How do you know this, Pastor Manny? Well, the Word of God says it very clearly. That you and I should know that which is good, that which is acceptable, and that which is the perfect will of God. Passover is good. Pentecost is acceptable. But the perfect will of God, the whole purpose of why you were born again, is unpacked in this final feast, the Feast of Tabernacle. Jesus was talking prophetically. He said... Let he that goes up into the rooftop, he that goes up into the Feast of Tabernacles, he's gone through Passover, he's walked through Pentecost, but now he's moving into the Feast of Tabernacles. That man, that believer, that family, tell them don't come down out of that feast. Ooh. Anyone here this morning to shout out amen? 
Can I give you a little scripture on that? Zechariah turned there this morning. Zechariah 14, verse 16 says this, It will come to pass that everyone that is left out of all of the nations, we're coming to this point right now, everyone in the nations which come against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts. There will be a company to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This one company of people will go up in the spirit to honor the Feast of Tabernacles. Watch this. Verse 17. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up to that feast out of all the families of the earth, whether they come up to Passover, whether they come up to Pentecost, that's okay. But if they don't go on to Tabernacle, you will never experience the power of of his word. What power, Pastor Manny? Full transformation. What transformation, Pastor Manny? You. You need to change. You've got to be transformed from glory to glory. But only this word can bring you up into it. Passover Pentecost cannot do it. It's not equipped to do that. The Holy Spirit knows this. So we're battling with the mindset in the church age where a lot of people just want Pentecost. We've got to accept Pentecost, walk it out and experience it, but now we've got to walk on. Get up this morning. Let's stand up. Stand up this morning. You've got to prophetically do it. I'm going to walk on. Everything I was learnt by my fathers and my mothers and my forefathers was given to me to equip me for this hour. But I'm prophetically, I declare it on my feet right now for me, my household, my children. You're going to walk it out. Let's go. I am moving into the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm doing it naturally, but in the spirit, I am declaring I'm going into my transformation. Yes. Amen. One more time. Some of us got left behind. Are you ready again? One, two, let's walk it out. I am walking into the Feast of Tabernacles. Becoming one with this word. This is where your glory is. Give somebody a high five this morning as you sit down. We're heading to where the glory is. The glory. That's where the glory is. We've been caught up with the gifts. We're moving now into the glory realm. Zechariah 14 verse 7 says this, Every one of the families who do not come up from the earth to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them, there shall be no revelation. People of God, when you don't come up to this feast, there's a cut off here. There's no revelation. What is revelation? Revelation is a reign of a word. This is a very specific word. Anyone who is in Pentecost, if they stay in this position in their heart, please hear me, ministers on the earth today. If you stay in Pentecost, you too will be missed out on the full inheritance. And I am saying that with all the love of God. Are you saved? Yes. Are you born again? Yes. Are you filled with the Spirit? Yes. Do you have the fullness of sonship? No. Here in Passover, you're a babe of the faith. You eat the milk of the, of the Word. In Pentecost, you move to adolescence. You grow in maturity, but you're not fully mature yet. You eat on the bread of life that overcomes the evil one. In the Feast of Tabernacles, you eat on the meat of the word, which is the mind of Christ. It's the spiritual wisdom of God from above. I'm excited this morning. 
Your diet changes as you walk with God. Matthew chapter 24, let's go on. This is Jesus talking about the end of the age. Parabolically, he is speaking symbolism. And we've just learned now that in the spirit, if we don't go up into the housetop, here, guess what's in the housetop? This is where they used to do it in the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the housetop. That's where the palm leaves are. That's where the victory is. That's where the glory is. That's where the gift is. That's the difference. A lot of people in Pentecost can shut They can prophesy, have dreams, everything, even points of revelation. But you know that that same person who's ever seen a believer pick up a smoke? Who's ever seen a believer go out and gamble? Hmm? A bit quiet now. How can they do that? Because there's a measure of portion of faith. There is a measure, a measure and a portion of faith here. There is a measure and a portion of faith here. You know what happens here? It's limitless. Jesus in the scripture says that he was a man without, the me without measure of spirit. It was endless in him. There are things that are in God that we have yet heard on the earth. But somebody is going to get into the housetop to hear it. Put up your hand this morning if that's you. If that's you this morning, I want to be in the housetop. I want to be in the housetop. I want to be hearing where the glory is. Let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house. Can I tell you the mystery? What people go down and if they don't come up here, guess where they go? They go back here. They, guess what they take out of their house? The garment. They walk in their other garments, the gifts. They're happy with the anointing and the gifts. They don't know the realm of glory. People can operate in their gifts and the anointing. But in this dimension, it's not the anointing that's working. It's the realm of glory. It's character. The church, unfortunately, has a lot of babes. A lot of people that are immature in the ways of God. And I'm not saying that to condemn anyone. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he talked about it. Chapter 3, he said, I cannot come to you as mature, but as unto babes in Christ. Everyone gets offended the moment the word comes out. You've got to grow up. The Father loves us. He doesn't want us to stay in outer lessons. He wants us to move to where the glory is. So what do they do when they go back down in the spirit? What do they do when they go back down from tabernacle? They don't know the language here, so they go back. Oh, I don't know about that, that place. I don't know about that word. They go back to what they're familiar with. Even Paul says, tongues will cease. So if the tongue is going to cease, if that's going to finish up, what's next? <laughs> what comes after the... What happens after prophecy will finish, will fall away? Paul says this in the, to the church of Corinthians. He said tongues will cease. Prophecy will finish. What will happen? Why? Because somebody has gone on into perfection. You don't have to prophesy anymore when you're walking in perfection. You don't have to prophesy that you know the bosom of the Father. You don't have to do that anymore. You walk in oneness with God. Whoa. See, that's the prayer Jesus prayed. Jesus, he prayed this prayer. He said this. Oh, oh, that he said, oh, my father, I pray that they would become one as you and I are one. Oneness is where we're going. 
You only get oneness in this feast. In Passover, you get union. In Pentecost, you get agreement. In Tabernacle, you become one with Him. When somebody look at you, they're looking at Him. That's what Jesus had on the earth. He had oneness. They couldn't, they couldn't fathom it. They couldn't fathom that this man, Jesus, was now one with God. He was God. The man, God. You couldn't separate him. <laughs> he was the man, God, walking on the earth. We don't want to come out of the housetop. Today, declare it. We're not coming out of the housetop. I'm staying up in this feast. This is where my transformation is. I tell you what, I've walked a journey with God, and I tell you what, it is the making in this area, the hammering of the work of God that goes deep inside of you. And 99% of it is done in the secret place. No one will see you being made. Only you and God. That's how it is. But the revealing of your relationship is openly with everyone. They will see that you know God. But the making of it is done in secret. That's why a woman, when she's heavenly pregnant, in the womb of a woman, you cannot tell where the embryo is. You cannot tell what is going on. It's in secret. That's what the seed of the word does. God goes into your womb and he is then birthing inside of you this character. It's done in secret. But it's openly revealed and manifest. Your state of condition of your relationship with him is openly clear. You stand for righteousness. You don't even have to talk in that dimension. It's coming off your character. People know that you're for God. <laughs> People know you're for God. Jesus, when he went to that place, he said not one word. Not one word come out of him. And yet the character of who he was, that he was the king of kings, was emanating out of his own character boldly. Verse 18, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. People of God, we don't want to go back. We don't want to go back. We are now moving. We are working in the field with the Lord. And he is doing a righteous work. He has put the sickle in and he is beginning. The sickle is the word of God. He is cutting and removing very carefully the tears in our life. We don't want to go back. We need to allow the sharp sickle of God's word to go in to cut out the tears. Only the spirit of the word can do it. People of God, the tears are our problems. Our flaws in our character. They're the tears that God is cutting out. Things that we gravitate to, but they got no real substance of who we are. That lad who wants to sit on Nintendo all night for five hours. That's a, that's a tear. God's going to cut it out. The lad who just wants to go fishing all the time and never want to spend time with God. He's going to cut that out. Nothing wrong with fishing. But when you just fish, fish, fish and you never ever talk to God, he's going to cut that out of your life until you get the revelation to spend time with him. I like hunting. I still go hunting now. I still go fishing. We still go diving. But it's not my primary source. When it's God's time, it's God's time. You know when it's your time with God, it's time to get into the secret place. Time to move with God. I'm encouraging you this morning. It's now time to get in with God. Please make time for God. Then you're going to hear the counsel of the word. I tell you what, when you're not in the place of God's counsel, you will be easily tossed to and fro to make rash decisions. 
that are going to hurt you in the long run. Verse 19, Woe unto them that are with child. That word child means the immature believer. Woe to them that are with the immature believer and to them that give suck in the days. In those days, what days is that? Now. Notice that too many people are on the milk of the word. They're at this stage here. I, yeah, I believe. Domestic violence going on in the house. Yeah, but I believe. Gambling, they're broke. Yeah, but, but I believe, pastor. Doc's department every weekend at the house. Yeah, but I believe. That's the milk of the word. The writer of Hebrews tells us, he that is on the milk, he that is on the breast, he that is immature in the word of God, he is unskilled in the ways of righteousness. He hasn't the word, the mature wisdom to change his life. I was like this for years. I loved Jesus, I loved God, I loved the Holy Spirit, but we were broke all the time. Why? Because the lad was still gambling. He was sneaking and playing Keno, putting his tab bets on the weekend, coming to church, loved God, but didn't know how to break this character. Anyone here this morning? I can hear all the wings. No, nah, don't do that. We'll, let's get real. This word is trying to fix us up. That's all he wants to do. He loves you. So if you take it like that, this word's a beautiful word to you. It says that a smoking flax he will not quench. You know what a smoking flax is? A smoking flax is a little bowl that they used to have on the menorah lampstand. Like this. And that little part there was called the flax. And if you never trimmed it to keep the flame a lit, high and lit, guess what happens? The flame would smoke a lot. A lot of black smoke would come off. So the high priest, they would have to get their, their robes and they would twist the robes and that would be the wick. And they would put it into the menorah lampstand and it would draw up the, the oil, which is the picture of the Holy Spirit, your garment of righteousness. And the trimming is the understanding. You get trimmed by your understanding. It says that the, Matthew 25 says this, that the virgins trimmed their wicks. What does trim mean? They grew up in their understanding and in their revelation to know it was time to go in to the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's your wick. God says this, he, Jesus says this, a smoking flax, I will not quench it. I will not put you out, says the Spirit of the Lord this morning. Though you are smoking black, though you are lacking understanding, our God loves us. Amen. He loves you this morning. Aaliyah, he loves you. Shiloh, he loves you. Tilly, he loves you. Carla Trent, he loves you. He loves you. He will not quench out the little bit of fire you have with him. Woohoo! Some are just on a thread. Just on a thread. Just making a church on Sunday. I'm just going to get it. Oh, honey, you know, I feel a bit sick. You know, lad trying to put the story on. You know, they, those stories, I used to do that. Oh, you know, I'm a bit tired today, baby. You know, let, let me stay home. Go on, you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for you. As soon as Archie goes, hey, TV on, leg up, laying up, he, he healed. <laughs> he healed. Lad playing. That's the acting in us. That's why Jesus says the hypocrites. Hypocrite was, it was a terminology given to people that did acting. They acted all the time. You can't get the truth out of them because they're acting all the time. Praise God. We've got too many actors. We don't need to go to Hollywood here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 20, but pray ye that the flight be not. Pray that your flight, this is the flight path. Here's the runway. And the Spirit of God got you. Woo! And he took off. And he's taken off. Pray that your flight is not in the winter. At the last moment. 
Don't wait to something to manifest. When you hear the word, walk it out in obedience. Don't wait, it says, for winter neither on the Sabbath day. That's the rest. That's where we're going. This is called the rest. Verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation. Here it is. This word phrase has confounded millenniums of people. It is a word that's only used about five times in scripture and yet the church has made a whole doctrine on the, 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 the day of tribulation. You know what the word tribulation means in the Greek? You want to know what it means? Anguish. So cross that word out, tribulation, it sounds so terrible, but the word is only anguish. Anguish from what? What it actually means in the Greek mindset, it's when somebody comes and they seen their potential bank account. They seen it. It was big. Had a million dollars in it. It's somebody who has seen something of what truly the value is of their life. Ooh. But the anguish is this. They seen it. They had the inability to access it. What do you mean, Pastor Manny? Some of us have the inheritance in us. The power of this word. But we don't know how to access the power of the word. We struggle week to week. And we don't know the power that's within us. Christ within. Christ within. Christ within us. The hope of glory. Where's Christ this morning if I asked you? He's in me. He sits in my spirit. He's wanting to talk to me. He's wanting to fuel me. He's wanting to lead me. He wants to guide me. But then there shall be great tribulation. There will be a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda people. They will be born again, filled with the spirit potentially. And yet never go on to know the power of transformation. Such was never ever since the beginning of the world. To this time nor ever shall be. People of God, that's why we have so many people on the planet right now. And the sad fact is, most people don't know the power and the calling of why they have been born again in Christ. It's not to just come to church on Sunday. The power that is inside of us has the power to change this universe, this world. Your world, your universe, it sits inside of you. That's what I tell people every time. Pastor Manny, how did you do it? Pastor Manny, why, 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 man, you changed, brother. I met a man at a funeral, I had to take a funeral on Friday. Homeless man, state funeral. They don't get burials, they don't get a service. They just get a 15 minute sermon at the allotment, straight into the ground. That's it, that's a state funeral. Anyway, they rung me up and said, Pastor Manny, you spoke so well, you know, we would like you to take this, this homeless man's funeral. I said, yeah, I can be there. A chance to show the world the power of this word. I was there and I did the funeral. This old man, old Murray fellow, he's in the back. Maybe a little bit drunk, a little bit tipsy. Only about eight people rocked up. And he was there and he was, he was singing, slipping away. He's singing that song up big too. Slipping away. Anyway, after the song finished, you know, I said I committed his body to the ground, into the presence. And then I was, I was about to leave, I was shaking some of the family's hands there. He, he was like, Pastor, Pastor, come here. I walked up to him. He was crying. So I hugged him. Big hug. I said, he said, Pastor, do you remember me? I said, yeah, I remember your face. Because he had, he had that face. I said, yeah, I remember you. I forgot your, na your name, but my brother, but I remember your face. He reckoned, yeah. I remember when you and your wife lived in this little house, little blue tin house. And he said, one day you seen me working. He working with all these other fellas. He's the only Murray lad there. And anyway, he was sweating out. I remember this day. 
I walked over, the Lord said, go give him water and hand him $20. That's what the Lord said. So I took him big water bottle over, gave him the water, because he was there, everyone else, no one was sharing with him. This poor man was thirsty. So I walked over, gave him the water bottle, and the Lord said, hand him $20. I gave him $20. It wasn't up to me what he did with the 20, but the Lord just said, I want you to do it. So I gave him $20. He, he was that man. He said, Pastor, you gave me water, you gave me $20. He said, I thank you for that. And I love you. I'm so glad you became a pastor. That was a testimony, people of God. An opportunity to show the world the power of love. That's what we are to do on this earth. You may only get one opportunity. Jesus only had one opportunity to raise the centurion daughter. One opportunity. He said, your faith, she's well. At that hour, it says that the centurion woman, a man of authority, just at the word of God that was spoken, he believed the word. And it says at that hour, the centurion sent message. He said, is my daughter alive? And they said, yes, she woke up at the very hour, at the seventh hour, when Jesus said, get up. You got one chance. Take every chance you have to touch humanity. It can change a lot of people's lives. This year, this church, we're going to get out. We're going to be so dynamic. We're not going to be hidden away. We have to attend everything that God wants us to attend. Every communion event. We've got to break this stronghold over in Israel. Our people are going to the grave far too young. What are we doing? Living up in the palaces. We've got to get down and we've got to begin to work these fields, man. I know we do a lot for the school and the churches, but I know we can do a lot more. Who's, who's ready to work? Who's ready to go to the field? Who's ready to touch the nations of the earth? See, it's easy to say, send me, but when the time comes, oh, no shame, I'm going to hide out. I could have hid out in the house that day. I could have hid out. I could have kept that $20 for myself. This is what we've got the chance. To touch somebody this morning. I can't get through it all. I'll do one more verse. I'm going to jump into the verse that's really key that I wanted to get in today. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. This is prophetic language. When this hour happens, when the day of tribulation, a lot of people will be exposed to this feast but won't come up. That's the hour of tribulation. People will get to hear this word and refuse it. They won't want to change. That's the anguish. That's the anguish. That's the tribulation. They don't understand the urgency of the word. They could have been a part of this realm of glory. Could have went on into sonship. Could have manifest the purpose of God. But they miss out. Now we begin to see what happens to that company of people. When they miss out from moving up into the Feast of Tabernacles. They go into what is called tribulation. It's a season of anguish. It's where you've heard the word but you don't know how to work it out. You never know the power of what really was inside of you. He says, after those days, tribulations, days, the sun shall be darkened. Underline the word sun there. That's very powerful prophetic language. That word sun there is father. Everyone say father. father. He father. That word sun there, it says there will be a people that the sun will be darkened. The character and the nature of the Father will be darkened from them. This realm of glory to that realm 
you can't even compare the realm of glory. That other realm looks like darkness compared to being in the Father's heart, in the bosom of the Father. Being in the Son, the Son is the Father. That word darkness in the Greek is katus. It means to obscure the revelation of the Father. Don't miss out on your Father. I can't stop crying. Ugh. Very few fathers in this move. Oh, I just missed them, eh? Didn't realize the value, credible weight. Determined this year to declare and to show love like never before. Isn't it amazing that we love, some, we love people so much and yet we haven't got the means to show it? Isn't that amazing? We do really love people, but we haven't got the means to show it. So I got something from Father. He said, Manny, love. Love is the key. Amen. And he sing me in the song too. Love is the key Amen. Amen. in everything you do. Jesus is the source of it all. Love is the key in everything we do. Jesus is the source of it all. These are words that have been printed deep in me. But it's fueled me with the fire to know that the voice of the ancient one, see, we, we don't think about this. There's nothing wrong with the ancient voices. Nothing wrong with that. That's why God, he is called in scripture, the ancient one. You know what the ancient one actually means? The voice of the ancestor. Paul was a father to the church. Father was a father to the church. Apostle Brian was a father to the church. The voice of the ancient one. Able to hear words that will imprint deep inside of you. That's why Paul urged Timothy. He kept on saying to Timothy, I urge you, I urge you. Don't put down the word that was upon your grandmother and upon you. He urged him. Why? Through the voice. This ancient voice. Can we love one another this year? Amen. Try one year. Try just not to speak ill of anyone. I am, uh, I, I, I've removed uh, to, uh, I, 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 I don't stand for it anymore. It doesn't matter if people stab me. Poke me, hang me, kick me, it doesn't matter me. Because I'm dead. I am dead to myself. You cannot affect somebody who is dead. Dead is where you need to be. Dead, this is the death of the cross. Crucified, dead and better. You can't offend me anymore. No matter what you do to me, I still love you. Let's stand this morning. Can I have a worship team? We're going to do something prophetic before we leave. Not even at 11 o'clock and we get to go home and relax and go swimming and share time with family. Grab your partner if you have or family. We're going to sing this beautiful song, Love is the Key, Pastor Trent. C or G, I don't know what it is. It's something there. I'm going to sing this old song. We're going to walk around. We're going to do something different this year. We're going to go see everyone in the church. 
and we're going to have a meaningful conversation to tell them, I'm here for you this year. We actually, we do, we love you. We're a family. Oikotomeo in the Greek. We're a family. Many different nations. One body. One head. One body. We're all a family. 